This is America. Now look at the difference between these two women. For better. For better. For worse. For worse. For richer. For richer. For poor. For poorer. <laughs> We hit that snag about 20 times in counseling. Brill made it very clear to Jonathan, you cannot be broke. In sickness. In sickness. And in health. And in health. To love. To love. Cherish. Cherish. And to obey. <laughs> we didn't talk about that one in counseling. We did talk about that in counseling. Yes, we did. So you want me to repeat that again? You want to just keep going? I think we can keep going. It's all right. <laughs> I'll forever submit to you, Miles. I'll forever respect you, Miles. I'll forever honor you, Miles. As the head of our home. In heaven, they hear. <laughs> On earth, I declare and decree. I shall be a submissive wife unto you. I don't know about you, but I know which one I'm willing to give my life for. I'm not rich, but I get off my ass every day to make sure I ain't broke. And that's the reality. As a man, there are certain things that's mandatory that you should pay for in a relationship with a woman, okay? <laughs> Y'all ready for another one? Here we go. For example, her rent. That's number one. No woman should be paying her own rent if she's in a relationship with a man, all right? No woman should be renting an apartment if she can't afford it. Her car payment. Again, if you can't afford it, you should be driving something cheap like a Yaris. Her light bill. Stay at home, mommy and daddy. You can just help them with the bills. Her groceries. Absolutely, she should never pay for groceries. Her gas. Here's 40 bucks, fill up your Yaris. <laughs> her insurance. Because, I mean, if you're paying her car payment, you might as well pay the insurance as well. Don't you care about her safety? So car insurance has nothing to do with your safety. You know, car insurance will cover you in case you get into an accident. You know, I had a 1994 Mazda 626 and I had Geico on that shit. $150 a month. Uh, sorry, $150 every six months. And it was for liability insurance. If you can't afford liability insurance, you just, you just don't have, you can't afford the drive period. You know what I mean? If you're broke, say you're broke. You know what I'm saying? If, if you broke, just say that. But, um, yeah, 150 bucks every six months, Geico liability insurance. It's not, that's, it's not that difficult. If, if, if you're expecting the man to pay for your rent, pay for your groceries, pay for all this shit, you can at least afford your $150 every six months, liability insurance. Yeah, pay the insurance. Shopping, okay? Your woman should never have to spend her own money to shop. Okay, so to be fair, shopping for clothes and whatever not, that's an added, added expense that, I mean, you don't need to shop every month. You don't need to shop every week. You know what I'm saying? My wife, I mean, she has a closet from here don't worry about my CPAP. Closet goes from here all the way to over there. And literally, literally, it's all clothes, all purses, all shoes, all the stuff that she buys for herself. She shops for herself. I have no say as to what she purchases for herself, which is fine. I'm okay with that. I let my wife have the freedom to buy whatever she wants for herself as long as she could afford it. As long as she could afford it. A lot of it's on toward credit cards and, you know, whatnot. And it's cool. Like, again, if she can't afford her own expenses, then she shouldn't be buying them. Let me just add that, you know, on special occasions like birthdays, anniversaries, Christmas, um, my wife gets stuff. Like, I get her stuff. You know what I mean? Like, for instance, when we got married, she had a $3,000 wedding set. Right, engagement and wedding ring. Ten year anniversary, we bumped her up to a ten thousand dollar ring wedding set as well. So, you know, she gets hooked up. She I mean, what was it one time? I think it was her birthday or, or Christmas or something. We went to the outlet here at Cabazon and we went to the coach store. I know one year was a Michael Kors purse, 
just recently, this, uh, I think it was this last April, we went to the Cabazon outlets. At the end of the day, she still gets gifted pretty well. And I don't mind because it's my wife. I mean, what is the point of her having sex with you? Apparently to you, having sex with your partner is a monetary exchange. Whatever happened to having sex to share a nut. I mean, there's times where I go down to my wife just for her pleasure, and then I wipe my face and walk away. So are there any guys that still like to go down for their pleasure? I like giving a blowy for my pleasure, so just wondering if that's still a thing anymore or if like we're going away with that. Keep me updated. It sounds just like this. For her good health? No. Take her shopping. Diamonds. Okay, diamonds are a girl's best friend. You're my best friend. And then if anything ever happened to you, I would lose my mind. My wife's birthday is in April. So her birthstone is a diamond. And as you can see, she loves shiny shit. But so if you're in a relationship with a woman, it is mandatory that by the six month mark, you buy her some diamonds, okay? Case in point, that fake chain around her neck. <laughs> and if your girl wants surgery, pay for it. Why not? Guess who's gonna enjoy it? You. I call cap on that because um, when women get surgery, BBLs, boob jobs, whatever else, it's to boost their confidence. It's about them. Men aren't asking you to get BBLs. Men aren't asking you to put in fake titties. Men are asking you to be natural, right? It's me personally. I feel like ain't nothing worth you putting your life on the line. A man that love you gonna love you whether you got a fat ass or not. That's just the way I feel, you know what I'm saying? And you can say I did it for myself or whatever, but you know, I, but I know every woman, like, that's probably 10% of the women in the population that's really honestly doing it for themselves. Most of the, and we see it every day. Soon they get it done, they straight to Instagram with it, posting the pictures, bikini pictures, shit that they know. And you know what it is because they can post a regular face picture and probably get 200 likes, but soon they post a body picture, they got 100K likes. So you know right. what it is. And you right. know why they doing it. Again. Yes, we see big titties, oh, big titties. Oh, we see a big ass, oh, big ass. But at the end of the day, we're not asking you to do this shit to yourselves. You're doing this for your confidence. So why should we have to pay for you to boost your confidence? What's that thing about uh, that Cat Williams had said? Bitch, it's called self-esteem. It's a thing of your motherfucking self, bitch. So, yes, get her a new pair of jugs because you can play with them, all right? It's not for her benefit. It's for your benefit. You know, I know a few couples where the man paid for the titties and then she divorced him to go find herself a younger man. Uh, yeah, so that shit ain't... <laughs> that ain't right. That ain't right at all. Yeah, yeah it's, so he'll enjoy it for the first six months or whatever until she builds confidence in herself because now she has big titties or she has a bbl and she's gonna go find someone else yeah that's how y'all hoes work pay for her titties all right so to recap clearly this lady this woman whatever she is clearly she's not married she doesn't have a boyfriend right she has unbelievable unrealistic expectations of what a man should provide a woman in the end it's like as a husband to my wife i provide a house i provide a car so she can get to and from work or wherever she needs to go i provide her everything she needs in life right when i started dating my wife She'd come over, we do what we do in the bedroom. Um, I'd fill her tank up, you know. She had her own car, she made her own payments, she paid her own insurance, and so on and so forth. 
she was an independent woman. She co-owned a house where her parents actually live in now. You know, it's like I'm married my wife, nothing changed. You know what I mean? Like she still provided her own, she still went to work and all this other stuff. But now if like if she were to be single again, I would hope to God that she kept the same mindset. That she still has to work and, and, and make do for her and not expect to meet a man to, you know, to, to, to provide everything for her. This particular kind of woman. I mean, I don't understand. And, and here's the thing, guys. And I'm not trying to be, make this any sort of racial, any, you know. But look, why do we see on social media, it's majority black women who are demanding this shit from men whether they're black whether they're white whatever there was that one video where the woman is a black woman with the braids and she's talking about take you can't be taking someone looking this beautiful to a chain restaurant because she wouldn't go to cheesecake factory this is the cheesecake factory this is the cheesecake factory y'all what's the problem with that this is a chain restaurant who takes someone that looks like this to a chain restaurant you know black woman and the guy was indian the guy was indian and uh he was looking for a wife he literally was looking for a wife and he just like this is not the one and it just became a big thing where now all of a sudden you can't take a woman to cheesecake factory of all fucking places some chicks got together and put out a list of places you can't go on first date i'm right? not paying yeah, you paying, but it I'm was paying. like, bro, it was like, bro, they had cheese. I can't take you to Cheesecake Factory. I'm paying. You paying. Who the fuck you got a list? They had a list. You can't take me like to no hangouts. I think it was like Waffle House is one of them. Like, I kind of respect Waffle House. One of them was to get drinks. You can't go on a first date to get drinks. Uh, That's the goal. Another, another, I'm just trying you to tell you. feed your greedy ass. But. They got together. It's, it's a long list, too. It's more than like 20 things or like 20 things of things you cannot, places you can't go for a first date. And I am purchasing. It's on me. My it's on tab. you. And you're going to tell me where to pay to take you. And I'm driving. Yes. yes. So I'm paying for gas. I'm paying for the meal, drinks, whatever. Yep. You're, you're not pulling your raggedy ass, dust ass wallet out. You're going to tell me why I can't take you? Yeah. Man, you kiss my fucking ass. I'll tell you that much. You talking about the Cheesecake Factory girl. You know how to done. Cause she talking about she's not getting out of the car. <laughs> I would have called the police. <laughs> and said she was trespassing? I would have said she's not getting out of my vehicle, sir. <laughs> you need to get her out of my car with your big greedy ass. You know, um, I just don't get it. I don't get it at all. It's like if you're meeting someone for the first date and you're expecting a $400, $500 bill, and then you're not expecting, then you're not expecting to, 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 to lay in bed with this guy. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm here for the meal. I'm here for a free meal. Like a lot of you, you are like that. And it's like, and then you have the expectations that, you know, we get to a certain point. If I'm having sex with you, you should be buying this and this and this and this. And it's like, that doesn't make any sense. It just doesn't make any sense. And uh, I, I hope, I hope. Women don't look at this particular woman and say, you know what? She has a point. She has a point. Please don't be like that. That's not how that that's not how the world works. I'm sorry. You know, have your standards. Have your standards. But at the end of the day, it's like don't shoot yourself in the foot. Make sense? You know what I'm saying? Have your standards, you know, way, hey, I'm I don't I don't sleep with anyone on the first date. Cool. But you're okay with him taking you to the Olive Garden, right? You're okay with, you know, going out to the movies or, you know, I, I mean, me personally, I'd rather take you to somewhere I can get to know you on the first date. Um, I'd actually just rather take you to lunch, to be honest with you, or breakfast. Um, you know, just something simple. But, again, everybody has, uh, or to each their own, so, I don't know. Maybe next time I'll create a video in regards to how I would approach a first date and, and, and what I would do. Um, because I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like that's what's missing in this world is 
guidance on what to do if you're single. Because people who are still single, expecting way too much, uh, I just feel like they're just misleading you. It's your boy King Churro. Thank you for watching. Remember that you loved and remember to be great every day because tomorrow is never promised. And that's why unrealistic expectations are what's killing society right now. Love y'all. Peace out. Every day you wake up, you got a decision to make. To go right or left, up or down, right or wrong. At the end of the day, you make the decision. Nobody forces you. So make the right decision. Make moves. Set the goals. Stop making excuses, man. And if it look like a duck, walk like a duck, and sound like a duck, it's a duck. Stop guessing. Just do the right thing. You heard? You hear me? I love y'all. Stay positive. Love one another. All right. And <laughs> <laughs> listen here. There ain't no doubt. It's been proven time and time again. A woman's the craziest fucking creature God ever put on this earth.